Hi, everyone, and welcome to another FBN video. Um, today, we're going to talk about Gradable. Uh, Gradable is a brand new initiative from FBN focused on sustainability, but it's really much more than that. And so with me here today uh, is Stuart Lorenz, uh, FBN and Gradable's head of sustainable uh, businesses. So uh, Steele, thanks for joining us. Yeah, thanks for having me, Charles. Okay, so, um, you know, sustainability is a big topic on farms uh, on a, for a number of different reasons. You obviously have the whole world of regenerative ag and practices that farmers are uh, changing to and adapting and adopting. Um, and then you have the world of carbon, um, which is uh, sometimes related and sometimes different. And producers have a uh, really a, a broad uh, menu of options to, uh, to choose from when they go out and look at these uh, issues and try and figure out how uh, carbon is gonna be implemented on their farm, what role carbon credits make. The other side of the coin is also, what is the role of buyers and the food system downstream uh, from producers and how do all these pieces uh, connect? So Steele, tell us about Gradable. What is Gradable and how does it work? Yeah, a great question, Charles. And, and uh, to be honest, uh, it can be a complex answer, but let's keep it simple. Uh, what Gradable is designed to do is to get growers preferential market treatment or premiums from the environmental claims that they can make in their field. And today we see two main markets. One is a supply chain market where your environmental claims flow along with the bushels uh, that you're producing. And the other uh, is an offset market. So essentially you're selling claims um, to external buyers uh, that are separate from what you're doing uh, in marketing your bushels. And, and so Gradable is set up to capture um, the information, score it, and then be, uh, you know, allow you access to those markets that are going to value um, those environmental claims. Okay, so now let's talk a little bit about uh, carbon. And, you know, because carbon credits is something that um, a lot of folks have heard about. They may not be uh, totally familiar with how it works or how it could work. Um, there's markets that are under development. There are buyers in the market uh, today. Um, and there are a range of different, you know, sort of players in, in the market uh, proposing different things. And there's some really, really important differences uh, uh, in, in how those different uh, programs work and how you can use them on your farm. Okay, so let's, let's, let's start at the total basics, um, you know, with uh, Carbon 101. What is a carbon credit? How is it earned? How does a farm uh, uh, enroll in a program to get, get them? Absolutely. So a carbon credit uh, is one ton of, of CO2 equivalent uh, sequestered for a period of time. And that period of time is really important. So for us, it's, it's 100 years. And, and essentially what a buyer is looking for, um, an offset for them means that they may have a... Um, they may be emitting a, a ton of, of carbon in their production of, of uh, uh, really whatever it is uh, that's going to be very, very expensive for them to remove from their process. It might cost hundreds or thousands of dollars to stop you know, that emission of one ton of, of, credit, or of, of, um, of emission. Um, and what an offset market exists to do is to essentially uh, incentivize uh, people that can uh, reduce emissions or sequester carbon at a much lower rate um, and allows those two uh, to buy and sell essentially to meet each other in, in a marketplace. And so um, the reason why um, uh, we are helping growers access this market is because uh, growers can actually store a substantial amount of carbon in their fields and in their soils. Uh, we know that this is, you know, uh, basic um, uh, soil science, right? And growers have known this for, uh, for decades, right? Um, but what is new now and what is really interesting is that period of time that the uh, carbon is stored. And that's where the complexity comes into because as a, a buyer of credits, uh, you have to know that uh, the ton that you emit is going to be offset, is going to be reduced by somebody else for a very long period of time. Um, and so uh, the shorter amount of time, the less valuable that, that credit is. Uh, and so that's the reason that this 100 year permanence is, is, is set. Uh, and so what, what we have uh, set out to do here is to generate these credits and to take on all of the complexities of measuring, monitoring, and, and really the risk of the potential that some of that carbon that we think is in the soil might not actually stay there for 
uh, generations uh, as land changes hands and as practices may change as well. And so uh, what we have launched here is really uh, an organization that's designed to uh, measure, monitor, and manage that risk. Uh, and help growers very simply uh, interact with these carbon markets uh, in the in a way that fits with what they do business today. Okay, so I'm a uh, corn and soybean farmer in Minnesota or South Dakota. Um, how do I uh, earn carbon credits on my fields? Great, great question. So um, there are a couple of requirements. Uh, first, uh, you have to, um, because of the way that carbon uh, markets uh, operate, there is a term called additionality, and it's important that we spend some time here. Uh, but essentially what is required um, is to say that you have to have some proof that uh, additional practices were adopted uh, to show that that carbon would not have been sequestered uh, otherwise. And, and I know that this is a frustration for some of our growers who have been uh, you know, uh, pushing the science here and adopting new practices for a long time. And so we can come back to um, what's uh, there are options available for those growers, but uh, for the growers who are gonna be working on generating offset credits, uh, the, there has to be proof of additional or new practices. Now, those practices can be a variety of different programs. They can be adoption of cover crops, they can be uh, reduced tillage, they can be uh, increased uh, nitrogen uh, and fertilization uh, efficiency, uh, it can be adoption of, of biologicals, uh, and it can be um, a change in, in biodiversity and cropping patterns. So um, there's, there's quite a few options. And so I, I know that some growers may not be able to maximize credit generation like they would like to because they have had, they've adopted some of these practices already. But there's a, there's a lot in there that we feel like growers can participate in, um, even if it's not you know, the, the, the maximization of those credit generated. So if you're a corn and bean farmer in Minnesota, First thing is to look at which practices that you can adopt. The second thing is that we will uh, essentially sign, sign you up to our program. Um, we will collect all of the information required. Uh, we will do a, a benchmarking uh, soil test analysis. Uh, and then we will uh, manage uh, what is a fairly lengthy process with the um, credit uh, registry, which is the market that these credits are, are traded in. Uh, and, uh, and then we will also go through a, a verification process. And finally, you will have a credit uh, in your account. And what, what data does a farm have to provide or what information does a farm have to uh, provide to enroll in a program like this? Yeah, uh, and, and data is a really important point here. Um, so the first is production uh, information. Uh, there will be historicals required as well, uh, going back two years but essentially application information, uh, planting information, uh, yield information. Uh, there's also a requirement for soil sampling um, and FBN handles this uh, on your behalf. Um, and then there is an ongoing expectation of, of uh, uh, production um, data contribution. So if you are an FBN member today and you're using our analytics platform, you are connected you know, to our, our program and you've, you're used to uh, uploading that information, it's very similar information. Uh, if you're not, uh, we have a robust uh, data operations team that can help you get your data where it needs to go, uh, whether it's you know on your monitor or on your desktop, or uh, you know even in cases of written records, we have the facility to to help you out there. And so, really, uh, data uh, concerns and data reporting, data requirements sh um, should not hold you back from this program. Uh, we can help you out uh, and make sure that you meet uh, those expectations. Okay, great. So now um, I've, ad I've adopted gradable. Um, I've, uh, you know, a switch from conventional to uh, minimum tillage or, or strip till, um, where I produce my nitrogen use. Um, I've now started generating credits. Um, walk us through how carbon credits work on the market and uh, what they are typically worth or the, the rate at which they're being earned, what their ranges of value have, have been on the market, and then how a producer can sell them. Yeah. So I can't stress this enough. These are brand new markets, nascent. That, that means that there is not a ton of uh, liquidity um, and you, you're gonna, uh, you know, it's not like uh, trading uh, corn and beans necessarily today, right? So um, you're, there are going to be, you're gonna sell these in blocks. It's going to be, um, there's gonna be all kinds of uh, different uh, pricing information uh, and it's gonna be difficult to sort through for sure. This is a new market, right? But um, what, 
the way that it works and the way that uh, Gradable has designed its program is that you are awarded a subset of the credits that you generate. Uh, we, we withhold some to manage that risk and that 100 year permanence, uh, some to uh, overcome the um, administration fees, and then the rest sits in, a, in a, um, a portfolio for you. Now you can decide if you like the price, uh, where it is, where the current bids are coming in at uh, and want to price, or if you want to hold for a certain amount of time uh, to wait to see what the market does. And I can tell you that um, uh, nobody has a crystal ball and nobody knows where these markets are going. But the reason why we have launched this program is because we believe that there is substantial demand that is being generated or that is uh, uh, preparing to come online. And that demand is in a couple of different categories. The first and where uh, you're likely to sell if you want to sell early is going to be in a voluntary market. Uh, this is corporations that are looking to offset their current carbon intensity, their current uh, carbon footprint. Uh, they have made an environmental goal to shareholders or to stakeholders, uh, and they are on the market buying uh, these credits today. Uh, we have seen those prices range anywhere between five and, and fifty dollars, uh, with most soil sequestration credits uh, pricing between fifteen and twenty five dollars per credit. Now the volume is low on that, uh, and the voluntary market is squishy because nobody is compelled to buy these, and that means that if the price goes up, you know, to fifty dollars or a hundred dollars, um, that many voluntary buyers may in fact decide that that's too expensive for them. So that's one component that's going to be early and early demand and, and nice demand, but not necessarily something that we can plan a lot around. Why Gradable and why FBN is really uh, believes that now is the time to be in this market and to help our growers uh, benchmark and store credits is because uh, we have gotten signals from uh, the new Vilsack USDA, uh, that they will be buyers of these credits as well. Now, again, nothing is finished, nothing is finalized, but uh, in the transition plan for the new administration, uh, they have outlined a program called the Carbon Bank. And what this program will do is designed to buy carbon credits from both agroforestry and working lands in the U.S., uh, and the numbers that they have uh, written in a, in a brief suggest that uh, this um, program will be buying in the range of a billion dollars or more, uh, and it will be setting a price floor. And that's important because that means that uh, it will provide volume for this market, and it means that you're going to be able to plan practices uh, knowing that there is a certain amount of um, uh, a price that you are going to be able to achieve. Again, we haven't seen the final policy here, but given that, uh, we, we expect that there is going to be substantial demand with the price floor that growers can trade, trade into. The final component here uh, is that um, if there are, if there is new carbon legislation uh, putting a tax burden on organizations, we would expect for uh, there to be a significant upside in the price of, of carbon credits. Um, now, we would not expect this, this tax to be levied on agribusiness, uh, but we would expect it to be on, say, uh, financial services or, or telecom or, or other industries, uh, giving them a reason to buy uh, substantially um, at a much higher price. And so that would take away the softness of the voluntary market and, and change it into a regulatory market. If you can sell into that, it's going to be a very nice business. So we cannot make any representations about, you know, what will happen in, in Congress or the USDA or anything else. I, I, I certainly don't want to make that mistake, but there it is time to pre prepare for that potential. Um, and that's why we're helping growers to benchmark and making sure that they have the facility to hold their credits should they be bullish on, on the emergence of this market and on pricing. Right. And so, so, you know, really big part of this is sort of why now? Um, because, you know, the people have been talking about this for the last 15 years. Um, there's been, you know, a lot of uh, discussion with different groups, but, um, you know, now you have many more buyers on the market. You have companies doing it voluntarily uh, because of, you know, environmental uh, claims they want to make to the market. So if I'm a big emitter or an internet company who uses tons of energy to provide my services, um, I need to go out into the market and, uh, and cover my emissions. Uh, and agriculture is one of the very few sinks uh, in carbon sinks uh, where 
um, as a matter of uh, production, uh, you're generating uh, and, and, and sequestering carbon uh, into your into your fields. Um, so, um, you know, what what crops do you uh, are, are you seeing are going to be eligible um, for these programs with the carbon bank or in the voluntary or the uh, involuntary market? Yeah, so really there, we would not expect a limitation on crops. Um, I think that, you know, certainly if you're doing corn on corn, there's going to be a huge opportunity for you to uh, introduce beans into that cycle and also uh, enjoy some uh, nitrogen efficiencies and improvements we would expect. Um, but uh, I think that really uh, almost any kind of cropping cycle that you're working with uh, in row crops, uh, in uh, most specialty crops, there's going to be an opportunity for you. Uh, now, now FBN has been uh, a long focused on uh, corn and beans, and and um, then the the remaining you know row crops. Um, but even uh, we expect this to happen in in tree crops, in in uh, various produce. Uh, there's going to be a case to be made for all. Now, um, our expertise is going to be less than that, but certainly uh, if you have a question about cropping and about opportunities. Uh, don't don't hesitate to reach out to us, and we have we have specialists that can uh, walk you through exactly the protocol and exactly the opportunities uh, to help you understand that. But the the big the big point here is this is not just a corn and beans uh, technology. This is not just a midwestern um, you know issue. This is something that many different uh, crops in many different regions will be eligible uh, to participate in, which is um, which is really great. Um, okay, so um, Steele, let's talk about optionality and and sort of carbon freedom. Uh, as you've talked about it, um, and why that matters so much for producers, why, why producers need to generate the credits now and, and then have that optionality into the market into the future. So yeah. how does carbon freedom and why does it, why does it matter? Yeah, so um, the, the first point that you, you brought up, uh, there, there's a couple of things. What is, what is carbon freedom is why does it matter and, and why now? And so let me start with why now. Um, Every year that passes, and, and uh, you know, our growers out there are absolutely going to recognize this, every year that passes, you improve and you get better. And so every year that you don't benchmark is a little bit less that you're going to get credit for. Um, you know, and, and again, that additionality issue um, where, where growers have adopted some practices already and they're kind of frustrated that they're not going to get credit for it. That could be you. And so we want to make sure that wherever you are, uh, we get you locked in today um, in a way that doesn't, you know, uh, require you to necessarily market at the current price, right? That should be your main hesitation in some of the other programs is that they want to lock you into a price. And so when you are evaluating, should I start today? Should I not start today? Um, you're thinking about if, you know, if prices rise in the future, maybe I'll be foolish for starting a carbon program today. And we want to disassociate those two. We want you to lock in where you are right now um, and then make your pricing decision separately. So, you know, if you do think that uh, the price floor that we have out there right now is $20 per ton, um, there are other organizations that are, that are offering similar things. If you think that's the best price that you're going to get, absolutely lock in, uh, uh, market that, and um, that's going to be, you know, uh, a good program for you. But if you're uncertain, uh, maybe you can market some, maybe you could hold some, you're going to want to work with an organization that can help you get benchmarked, make sure that you're locked in there. Uh, and then you can wait and see and you can make that decision as you get in more information as, as we all get more information about, you know, where these markets are going to go. Um, and then, uh, so that that kind of touches on what what is carbon freedom and why does it matter. But uh, I will also say that in addition to being able to make a bank decision or a price decision, um, for many of our growers, we're finding out that it's important to them who ultimately consumes their credit. Right. And if you're working with an organization that um, you, you do a deal with, that, that you sell the rights to, to your carbon, um, and then they go and find their own buyer at whatever, you know, uh, whatever price, then then you're, you're, you lose that, that freedom to be able to say, okay, this is a business that I like, that I, that I think is, has the right intentions here. Um, and I want to sell my, my credits to. Um, so, so both of those things, uh, again, you should be allowed to, to choose, you know, uh, how, what your marketing strategy is, and you should be allowed to choose who you do business with. And I, I think that those are fundamentals that don't change regardless of what um, commodity we're talking about, you know, it could be wheat or it could be cotton, or in this case, it is carbon. So, and carbon is really a new crop. It's a new commodity. It's, it's something else that your farm can produce. Uh, and it's something you can take advantage of 
um, that is, uh, your farm is already, may already be um, generating those environmental benefits, but you're not capturing them, you're not measuring them, you're not getting rewarded. And so especially, you know, for producers, sounds like for producers who are, you know, uh, just about to start making a transition, maybe you're in the process of starting to adopt uh, no-till or, you know, both looking at alternative um, uh, rotations or looking at, you know, different nitrogen programs. Um, this is an especially, you know, important moment to make sure you are benchmarking now and you are uh, enrolled now uh, so you can capture, uh, capture those, those, those maximum benefits. Um, so, um, you know, where do you, uh, uh, Steele, where do you see the, uh, the market uh, developing, you know, from here? What's, what, what, you know, there's a lot going on in, in Washington. Um, what do you see taking place over the next year and, and what should uh, folks be looking out for? Yeah, um, so we've talked a little bit about what, what we think markets, where, where markets are going to go. And um, I think, you know, it's, it's always difficult to say which policies are going to come online when, um, but the, the Biden administration has made quite clear that they are going to use incentives um, when it comes to agriculture, not regulation, um, and that they're going to be developing a number of programs um, that may take a variety of different approaches. And, and one they've been quite clear on is that carbon buying uh, component, the carbon bank. Um, they are also looking at uh, tax credits. Uh, they are also looking at um, changes to the NRCS or improvements, enhancements to the NRCS um, that will make more funding available. And so uh, it really is a time to pay attention to what's going on, certainly. Um, it, we also expect to see uh, additional investment from uh, uh, private companies in that voluntary market um, and are getting uh, a lot of interested uh, parties already that want to uh, list bids on our platform to, um, to uh, buy your credits. And so uh, I would expect that that uh, continues to increase and expand. Um, yeah, so I, I think the the real important um, kind of the, the key factor here is to make sure that you're prepared um, for the potential of these markets emerging um, and that you're uh, getting, you know, you're, to the extent that you can and is possible, you are uh, generating the most credits uh, possible, you know, for you. So uh, getting started right away, uh, working within some of the FBN analytics and performance um, components uh, that, that are on our platform today and that uh, we'll provide through uh, future services, I think, um, are all things that you should be exploring. And, and Charles, I, I think that we've, we've covered quite a, a bit here today. And I, I think that if uh, what I want to um, make sure that, that folks know is that we have um, uh, people on our team that are dying to have conversations with you that are that are really interested in answering your questions. And uh, if you're still not, you know, quite sure, still call us. Uh, we would love to answer your questions. This is, you know, not, um, not as transparent. One of the, one of the, my biggest um, uh, uh, reasons why we are doing uh, in this and are in this market is because we felt that there hasn't been a lot of transparency. And so we're going to answer your questions straight. Uh, we're going to help you get your carbon strategy in place. And if that is, uh, you know, listing credits with us, fantastic. If it's not that's good. Like you should be making the, the right decisions for yourself and for your organ, uh, for your you know operations. So um, it doesn't mean that you shouldn't have a very complete, clear picture of what the opportunity is. So um, definitely follow up with us at uh, uh, gradable.com backslash carbon, uh, or give us a call, send us an email. Uh, all of the contact information is on is on that site. So um, that's the best way to get additional information from here. So if, I, so if I'm an FBN member who's already got data and I want to, you know, start getting into Gradable, go to gradable.com uh, slash carbon and then yep. uh, fill out the form. Our, our team will reach out to you. If you are not already an FBN, you can still go to gradable.com um, and enter your information there. Uh, remember, FBN is now free, uh, so you can uh, join FBN in, in just a few seconds. Uh, it's really, really uh, quick and easy. Well, uh, Steele, thanks so much um, for the time. And um, so, yeah, please, everyone, go to gradable.com, check out the program, check out the new uh, the Carver program. And as Steele said, give us a call uh, and uh, we will uh, help you through uh, this process. Um, so thanks so much, Steele. Thanks, Charles.